<laughs> Room service. Hey, brother. Welcome to Canton, Ohio. <laughs> Thank you, man. What were your goals when you first started the season? To rip the NFL up. Wasn't anything about scoring touchdowns or making this team pay or anything like this. I just wanted to come here and rip the NFL completely up. They call me the freak, man. really begin to watch where Randy Moss may or may not go. Of course, his on-the-field production at Marshall in two years, tremendous. Look at the touchdowns, 44 TDs, most of them in the last uh, two years, 25 touchdowns in last season. However, to boil it down, high school days at West Virginia, two counts of misdemeanor battery, that pretty much nixed him. He was on his way to Notre Dame. Then Bobby Bowden took a shot of him at Florida State. But while he tested positive for marijuana while serving some time, that nixed his potential career at Florida State. While at Marshall, charges that were later dropped but continue to have some trouble. Do you take a risk and just go with him because he's a great football player? Or is there a red flag? Here's the views around the league. Randy Moss is on our draft board right now, rated as a first-round pick. Uh, when we actually stack our board then he won't be on the board. I don't think you can judge people on other people. Uh, I think that if, if, if the New Orleans Saints and Bill Carrick or Mike Dick judges Randy Moss or anybody else in Randy's on a Lawrence Phillips, you're doing a disservice to Randy Moss. You have to judge every player, an individual, an individual situation. You can't lump them together. I just think if you're going to invest a first round pick in a player there better not be any question marks in regard to his past performances off the field. You have to err on the side of caution because uh, it can be very destructive to your salary cap. It can be very destructive to uh, getting the right type of guys in and, and being able to pay them. So uh, sometimes you may miss on a guy who is going to come in and do very, very well. But you have to play the percentages. Well, I don't write bad character. I write past history of whatever it was. Uh, do I think that can be changed? And then I put down yes or no. Do I think it can be changed? Yes. Do I think he's changed already? I think he's in the progress of trying to change. Whether he's changed or not, I don't know. Well, Chris, I had a chance to read some team scouting reports and psychological assessments of Moss. And due to character problems, which are obviously well documented, there's great concern by this one team scouting report as to how Moss would potentially handle a high-priced multi-million dollar contract. Now, they also, the scouting report also detailed how the lack of discipline was affecting his work habits. One scout questioned his ability to lead or if he would accept criticism. And one scout went so far as to say that to their, the best of their knowledge, Moss had not even been really yelled at by anybody at Marshall, so how would he respond to that type of, of discipline once he got into the pros? The psychological test that I saw, the summarization was, until he develops more self-discipline, he will be his own worst enemy. And it was from, this was from a psychological test that is administered to many players uh, throughout the draft. Now, as for his on-the-field performance, scouting reports say he can basically do whatever he wants uh, on the field. However, the flip side of that is one team's report, which says they wonder how he'll be able to get separation from his defenders and how he'll handle bump-and-run coverage in the NFL. So, certainly a wide variety of opinion, Chris, on Randy Moss. Well, he hasn't been a bad guy around us, you know. He's been here two years, and he's done everything we've asked him to do. He's adhered to our uh, very strict uh, rules we have for our football team. He's made every practice. He's not had a crossword word with a coach. It's amazing to see how most people base on perception, and they make their points of view and their opinions before they even meet a, a person, before they even get to know the person. And when you do that, uh, you can totally get somebody wrong and, and be mistaken. And I think a lot of people are mistaken about Randy. All I can say is I just think his actions just speak for themselves. The team, it's a lot. Like a couple of years ago, the, Michael Jordan get, didn't get picked first, but now everybody regrets it. And I think that's going to be the same thing that happens with Randy.
We know Randy can outrun anybody, but can he outrun his past? No, he can't, and, and his past is, is in the past, and I think his future is spotless. Randy has matured a lot. I think they're piling on. I mean, they're just rehashing old things. When Randy faces adversity in the NFL for the very first time, how do you think he's going to react? I think adversity, it, it might slow him down a lot, but it'll never stop him, just because uh, he, he never lets it stop him. He may get down a little bit, and he came through all the adversity through negative things in the media, but he's still pumping, he's still going as hard as he can. I think he's totally made a 100% change. He's totally turned things around, and he's done great things for us here at Marshall. And whoever picks him in the NFL draft, we'll be very lucky to have him on his team. Whoever gets him, I guarantee you, will be doing somersaults. One more note, eh? another psychological evaluation that was given to and made available to the Bears, Dolphins, and Saints by a New Orleans psychiatrist said, in summary, this young man under the right system should adjust quickly and respond positively in a most consistent manner. So it's not all negative, at least from the psychological standpoint for Randy Moss. Chris? The uh, fifth pick in the draft, Chicago Bears select running back Penn State University, Curtis Enos. The Rams select defensive end, Nebraska, Grant Wistrom. New Orleans Saints select tackle, San Diego State University, Kyle Turley. I just uh, got off the phone with the uh, Cowboys war room, and they're, they're going to go a cold feet like a number of teams are with the Randy Moss. What is interesting here, guys, is that he could go with this pick, or he could fall all the way to early second. The Dallas Cowboys select mm. defensive end from North Carolina, Greg Ellis. One team for whom Randy Moss might be in the picture, who are they are considering Ross, uh, Moss, although they don't necessarily think he'll be there at number 21, are the Minnesota Vikings. Dennis Green told me, this is America. Everyone deserves a second chance. But perhaps even more interestingly, they have someone on their team they think would be a very good influence on Moss, his brother, Eric. From Marshall University, Randy Moss. No there you Chris go. Carter, Jake Reed, Randy Moss, a healthy Brad Johnson, Big. Robert Smith signed, McDaniel and Stussy signed up front. His brother Eric Moss Yep, in Minnesota. So I think you look at Randy, you see the size, uh, physical ability, athletic ability is, is tremendous. Uh, you watch him here against Ole Miss, and this is the first play, offensive play for Marshall, touchdown. That's the capability he, br he brings to the table. Tremendous speed. I tell you, he can just explode on deep routes. You watch him here. Look at the athleticism coming up here. I mean, you're talking about a guy, look at that. I mean, you don't see that in receivers that come into the NFL draft out of the college ranks every year. Now, granted, he dominated a lower-level competition. You see him here, fade routes. He's unstoppable uh, in the Mid-American Conference in that particular area. Uh, you know, catching the ball right off the defender's helmet. Uh, yeah, you look at this, a man among boys at that level. The question with Randy is, against West Virginia, and of course in that old Miss game after he hit the uh, home run early, struggle a little bit, getting off the line of scrimmage, route running's just a little floppy. He needs to fine-tune his game a little bit. Obviously the off-the-field concerns are there. He has to put all that to rest, stay focused on football, work on his game at wide receiver. I spoke to Andre Wadsworth about him. Of course, they were together that one year. And he said one thing about Randy Moss that impressed Andre was he was in the weight room and he was working to develop his skills that one year he was at Florida State as a red shirt. So if he stays focused, sky's the limit for a kid with his physical and athletic ability. Hey, offensive weapons in Minnesota, Joe. We just exactly. mentioned them here. I mean, let's take a look. If you if you see a big grin in Minnesota, it's Brian Billis, the offensive coordinator. He's got to be grinning ear to ear. Andrew Glover at tight end, all these wide receivers. You look at the receptions. Chris Carter with 89, Jake Reed with 68. Chris Walsh with just 11, and Hatchet with just three. But now you bring in a Randy Moss. You go three wide, you've got the three biggest receivers in a division where they like to throw the football anyway. I think the one thing that Randy Moss brings now to the Minnesota Vikings is he brings a real deep threat down the field. You, you look at Carter, you look at Reed, both of them big guys, both of them mid-range big receivers. Now you've got somebody who adds a stretch to the field. You start stretching the field out with him, you can do an awful lot with those big guys underneath. So, and, and I also think we talked about this if he'd gone to Dallas. Very positive influences around him. We talked about a Michael Irvin. I believe can be a positive influence and a Deion Sanders. Now you look at Reed and Carter and the guys that have been put together on that Minnesota Viking football team, 
you've got a very good positive group for him to be around. I go back to the Detroit Lions. Terry Fair, five nine and a quarter, has to match up against a Reed, a Car, and now a Moss in the division where you have Abrams, another small quarter. Yeah, but I, I still think, I think quickness can negate size. Like I said, you can't be perfect with the ball. Guys can get in front pretty good. Well, five nine and a quarter, cornerback covering Randy Moss, five. and Jake Reed and Chris Carter. Good he, luck, Joe. He better be able to run at least, right? <laughs> His mother says it's fulfilling a lifelong dream for him. Randy Moss playing along with his brother Eric, and it's going to be with the Minnesota Vikings. Congratulations, Randy. Uh, did you think it was going to take this long, though? No, I really didn't, but um, we all sat in the room looking at the TV, and uh, we just waited on the right call to be made. So uh, Coach Green made the right call, and I'm happy. And now I can just uh, be there with my brother. Minutes ago, you were talking with Dennis Green, and what did he have to say? What did he tell you? He just said, um, really, just to be encouraged and uh, just let all that <clears throat> stuff and hype just, uh, just still just keep it in the back and uh, let's just, you know, concentrate on we doing best and he's going to bring me in to play ball and that's what I'm going to do. Have you talked, have you had previous discussions with your brother about the Vikings or the possibility of joining him there? I don't think my brother expected me to be uh, late in this round, but um, I guess, you know, this uh, was made out for the best and uh, I'm just happy and very lucky. Randy, you told me yesterday that if you knew all this kind of talk about uh, all the negatives coming out, the weeks leading up to the draft, you told me if you knew all this was going to happen, that maybe you would, you know, have thought differently about coming out after your sophomore year at Marshall, and you might have considered staying another year. Uh, yeah, like I told you yesterday, I think uh, the past had a lot to do with it, but uh, I'm picked now. I'm a Viking now, and so uh, I'm very high, happy and excited to uh, be going there with my brother and coach green in minnesota with the receiving court and quarterback and running back that they have so hopefully i can fit in and uh just make it happen you also told me that uh you have something to prove especially to the teams that passed you by Does that still hold true i'm not really holding a grudge but i think with the kind of excitement i bring to a football uh game or team uh they uh, pass me up, so I don't really, like I said, don't hold no grudges. I'm just happy now that I'm a Viking, so I'm just going to make the best stuff to go in there and just hopefully uh, fulfill my dream, and that's to play and win games. Do you feel you have anything to work on at the next level? I think just listen to all the analysts. Uh, they really said a lot, and I took it in my head, and uh, they made a point, you know, these certain things that this guy has to work on to be successful in the league. So uh, I'm just taking it uh, beyond you know, to another level and uh, just do what they said and hopefully turn out to be the best. You had a reputation of teaching young receivers at Marshall University. Some of the things you learned in your one year at Florida State, are you going to welcome that from the veteran receivers like a Chris Carter and such at the Minnesota Vikings? Almost oh, definitely. Uh, seeing Chris and uh, Jake Reed down there doing uh, the things they do best at score touchdowns and I think I was looking at the receptions uh, for the whole year and uh, hopefully I could just fit in to, to their mix and uh, like I said, just make it happy. I think I'm about winning championships, and I just want to come to Minnesota and hopefully uh, put them back in the, the game. Randy, thanks for your time, and congratulations. Right. Randy Moss, a new member of the Minnesota Vikings. Dennis, uh, first of all, congratulations on the pick. As usual, you're <laughs> never afraid to stick your neck out, right? Never afraid. Um, well, the bottom think, line. When did you think well, that Randy Moss this. would come to you? Uh, probably last November. Because I oh, okay. think in the National Football League, well, let's face it, I mean, this is old, old news. I mean, mm -hmm. this is not like it happened yesterday, right. and that's been our philosophy. We'll take the best player on the board. So last November, I thought it could be, regardless of whether we're picking 30 or further down, that uh, we could get the player. Dennis, how much in knowing his brother and having him play for you, did that play a role? A huge role in you making this pick this way? Well, we know more about uh, Randy Moss mm -hmm. and anybody else. We have his brother here. We spent a lot of time talking to him. We've got probably the best spiritual leader in the National Football League and Reverend Keith Johnson, who's the head of cause. We've got one of the best players, Chris Carter, in the National Football League as far as working and trying to get guys to understand what it takes to be uh, true to yourself and understand yourself. So we have no doubts about Randy Moss. What we think is this. Randy Moss teaming up with Chris Carter and Jake Reed with Robert Smith in the backfield running the football and Andrew Glover going down the middle will give us the most potent offense in the National Football League, and that's why we drafted him. Will there be, and I know you just drafted him, Dennis, so I mean you don't have the answer <laughs> to the question yet, but will there be special provisions in his contract, including maybe drug testing that maybe you're not in other players' contract? Is that part of an, of, a, of an agreement? I mean, you've talked with him before, obviously. No. No. That, why would it be? Everybody in the National Football League has drug testing. But that's I mean, I think this, I, you know, when I go back to this, it's plain and simple. This is a young man who's a great player, 
who made some mistakes in his past. He was 18 and 19 years old. He's still only a 21-year-old young man. And we think this, that his life is ahead of him. We're taking the high road. We're saying we got a full glass of water here, and we got a football player who's going to mean a lot to our football team to help us win a championship. Hey, you know what I hear in your voice? You know, we just visited a couple of weeks ago. I hear and I see excitement. I mean, you're excited about this, about going to re redo the playbook, right? Well, I am simply because what we have now and what we haven't had in a few years is a big receiver that can go on the outside opposite of Jake Reed with now Chris Carter working real big time on the inside. And so with that in combination with Robert Smith, we're going to be there. Dennis, this is Joe. Does it also give you that opportunity to take the ball down the field a little bit more? Chris and Jake, they're, they're fast, but certainly not in this type of a category. Sure. It really can stretch the field for you, can it? Well, I, th I think it can. You know, we've had so much trouble with Herman Moore throughout the years, and Herman runs a hitch and a hook and a go. I mean, Randy Moss can do a lot of things besides just a hitch, a hook, and a go, but that is sufficient <laughs> when you talk about what Chris Carter can do on the inside and Jake on the outside, and again, with Rob, us putting the kind of money with Robert Smith, it only makes sense for us to do everything we can to put the defense in a situation where they cannot defend the Minnesota Vikings. Dennis, this is Chris again. Now, you passed a couple of years ago on Warren Sapp, but every, every situation is different. And sure. there's a question to some about coachability uh, uh, of Randy Moss. You obviously, I'm guessing, don't feel that that's even an issue. Am I right? Well, it isn't. Well, we, we talked with Coach Bob Pruitt. He doesn't. He thinks he's a tremendously coachable young man, and I think this. We know a lot about him. We don't think that's going to be a problem at all. We have a lot of players on our team that have had to develop and come on. He does, too. No rookie player is going to go out and, and be the MVP in the National Football League. But we know this. This is a great talent, and that's really what it comes down to. So we're not going to be concerned about that. We know what he's going to do. He's going to come in here and help make us a lot better. Hey, you see Warren Sapp uh, twice a season, and you see what sort of a player right. he has become, which isn't really a surprise. Did passing on him a couple of years ago maybe affect this decision at all? I mean, creep in and say, hey, we could have done that too? <laughs> Keep in mind, all Warren Sapp information came the day before the draft and the day of the draft. What we're talking about with Randy Moss, we've known about for two years. So I think that's right. the difference in night and day. You're excited. I can, I can, I can sense it. Go back, go back yes, in there the and enjoy up. yourself. Tee the ball up. <laughs> tee it up. Now. All right. Uh, hey, hey, thanks for joining us, Dennis. We'll see you a little All later. All right. Take care now. You bet. I, I tell you what. Play now. They were, they were laying in the weeds on this one, weren't they? Well, they were laying in the weeds. Well, we'll talk about that. First down from the 48-yard line. Randall going deep again, adjusting his Moss, oh. and then oh. Randy Moss squeezes his way in for the touchdown. It is unbelievable. He just throws it up, and these guys ca catch the football. I, this is like a circus out here with these guys. Randy Moss is the best young receiver that I have seen maybe ever. Walt Harris in his face, that's fine. Can we tough him up? No. Watch now, watch him dance. This is what's amazing about him. He flows through the entire Bear defense. Rio back. Cunningham gets it back from Smith, throws for Moss, touchdown!
Randy Moss is going to do a lot of things that you've never seen before in the NFL. Minnesota's trying to take it away from him. Money hand going deep for Moss. Moss has got it. Touchdown. What do you do? Jump in the stands. I don't know that. what you do. What the hell this guy is? Well, that's what Randall Cunningham says. He, yep. says. he says he says all the time. Just chunk it in the end zone. Chunk it in the end zone and I'll get it. And Randall Cunningham listened to him because that's exactly what he did. He chunked it in the end zone. He flung it. This is Randall Cunningham and he's going for seven more. And it is Moss getting position. Touchdown. Oh, he's oh, unstoppable. <laughs> Simultaneous possession goes to the offense. This is Randy. You have arrived. What a statement. I, there's no moss growing on this tundra. Unbelievable. Again, just throwing the... But you know, you always say don't throw into double coverage. Watch the safety. Throw away from the safety. But here's the safety, and here's Randy Moss, yeah. and he just splits him. Earlier, he did it with his jumping. That way, Rod Smith is right there. He just gets right inside of Smith. Turn Smith around and he catches that ball before it gets Williams on Moss And you can just see those receivers go after the football They are aggressive and a little they page out of the Michael Irvin book about how to move a guy on by a little bit Absolutely Chris Carter is the same way it's back from Minnesota And he is throwing it back to Cunningham the old flea picker and Open it with Randy Moss and in the end zone is a Minnesota touchdown Yep, you know they were going to do it. The fans knew they were going to do it. The Dallas Cowboys knew they were going to do it. You knew they were going to do it early. Or Randall Cunningham just gets that ball and he just chucks it deep to Randy Moss. That was off a flea flicker on the right side. Viking team. Here's Cunningham back to throw it and going deep. And he's got Moss. And there's a flag on the play. And Moss has caught the pass and is in the end zone anyway. Touchdown. Just throw it as far as you can. This guy is amazing. Randy Moss is amazing. Randall Cunningham is yeah. amazing. That Randall Cunningham was telling us last. Cunningham is going to make another jump ball. And Moss just takes it away. So the Cowboys showing blitz. Minnesota. Picks. Randy Moss breaks a tackle. And Randy Moss races down the sideline. And Randy Moss. Just outruns everybody into the end zone. He is incredible. 56 and 56 yard touchdown catches by Randy Moss. Three catches, three touchdowns, 163 yards. He's number 20. Stays in the block. And now Culpepper airs it out. Moss! You gotta be Did he stay and he did? Oh, Holy yeah. cow, are you kidding? What's up, football world? 84 here. Defenders 
had their back to the play. I come ready. I came out the womb, I was ready. deflection has the presence of mind to still locate the football really a nice nice job of concentration on Randy Moss's part Major moves made by Wanstead. Long, long pass for Moss. He's got it. All the way to the 10 yard line. Here's Jeff Jones back to throw. Fires up the middle to Randy Moss. Randy Moss shakes one tackler and gets across the Dallas 40 to about the 38. And they found out what they can do to Randy. The calculator to count him up. Here's Culpepper. Steps away, firing deep for Moss. And Moss may have come up with it. And they did catch it. That's amazing. They had three guys on him, too. Yeah. Because you always do that when the quarterback rolls away. They always have Randy Moss go deep on the... Got to keep him happy. Here is Culpepper. Sitting back to throw in the end zone. Moss, touchdown. Now there, this one might be questioned. I'll tell you, he was double team too. But that
hit in the Minnesota backfield. Culpepper looking and throwing as far as he can throw, it looks like. And the pass is caught by Moss. Touchdown. He is absolutely amazing. Where Felipe Sparks was right there. They're the turkey leg winners. <laughs> turkey. Yes, Andy sir. Moss, Robert Smith, Chris Carter, Dante Culpepper. Culpepper! <laughs> Are we really winners if we have to eat it? No, no, no of course you have to eat it. That's, <laughs> that's it. I don't know why you guys have I don't me think that makes us winners. They, I think they have me here to bless the food. <laughs> <laughs> so we have you there. Tell us, tell us about, about Dante Culpepper and Randy Moss. Well, if I can stay between them and referee them every once in a while, they want to... Um, have a boxing match on the field. So if I can just keep them from fighting each other, <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be all right. But Dante, tremendous composure, uh, especially for a young quarterback, limited amount of experience. But he also realized he doesn't have to win the game for us. We got great weapons. You got Smitty running the ball, you know, playing. You know, him and Marshall Falk, you know, they're, they're the best two players in the NFL right now. Then you got Randy. Randy's going to make his plays, especially when you show up, John. He's definitely going to try. I know it. I love that. Hey, <laughs> I told him already. Hey, Randy, how do you keep both feet in bounds like that? How do you do that? Well, I just learned, you know, these past three years, you know, I've been, I've been looking at greatness. And so, uh, you know, I just gotta, I gotta take what he give me. Well, we're watching greatness right now, number 84. All I'll right. Super Freak. That's him. <laughs> That's Super Freak. If there's a better player in the NFL, I don't know who it is. And, and, and Robert, it seems like every time you run with the ball, they're still fooled by how fast you are. You think yep. they're ever going to catch up with that? I hope not. It's, it's working to my advantage right now. I hope it continues to do so. I mean, how do you do that? I mean, how do you, you know, change and burst and go to inside and outside and all those things? I think it really is just the way that I run. I think that I have such a long stride that people get confused a little bit. They think that I'm not moving that fast and just kind of uh, move by them. They feel the same way about me, so. too. <laughs> well, let's, let, let, let's talk to number 11, Dante Culpepper. They talk about your composure, uh, your maturity. Uh, can you explain all that? How you've done so well? Well, the main thing, I got great veteran players around me. And we work hard every day in practice, and we practice how we play. And uh, that's basically how it goes. And I got the guys to help me, so I know I'm not out there by myself. We just all do it together. Denny Green said that he didn't give you the car. He just gave you the keys. And, and, and you're driving that thing. Randy, where are you riding in it? Uh, shotgun. Hey, <laughs> definitely shotgun. I'm shotgun. Got Dante driving. Got Smitty and CC. Well, you can put everybody, put three, three on the lap. So, uh, you know, we just have a, uh, a nice group of guys here, man. We just have a, a right nice next family. To him shouting directions at them. Definitely. <laughs> I'm just a mechanic to make sure they got oil, make sure it runs well. How about how about any arguments during the game? Has that ever happened? We thought we saw one today. Every week? Oh yeah. Man, I, I think that has a lot to do with, 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 with everybody here just uh, being a competitor. I think that uh, Robert expects a lot out of us, uh, out of the receivers downfield to block and spring for a touchdown. And, you know, we, uh, we expect a lot out of Dante to get us the ball. And Dante, uh, you know, wants us to catch the ball. So, you know, just by everybody being competitors, of course, you're going to have a few... Um, a few uh, altercations. Argument, yeah. yeah, yeah, but Robert, Robert's never in them, and Robert's arms, your arms are getting bigger. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just looking at that. You get, you I got need to get my legs a little bigger. That's what I hear. But. Take, man, take, are you jealous? You got a couple <laughs> guns there, man. Take one of those big arms and rip off. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. Take those legs off there and hold <laughs> okay. them up. Just, just grab one off there. Well, I'm That's it. Dante, grab one off there and hold it up. I know. Hey, I know. Fox. Congratulations, Yo, man! It's for all the people back in Minnesota, West Virginia, Ohio, Florida. This for everybody, yo. We deserve it, baby. I'll be home soon. Thank you, guys. Thank yo, you very much. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody right, back at home. Thanksgiving. Oh, man, I love you, Kid. Happy Thanksgiving, Good baby. Going. Hey, Mr. Man, Mr. Summerall. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving, fellas. And to you too. All right. Man, well. <laughs> First and goal at the six yard line. They got big bodies, that's that's what I would think about. Third and eight, Randy Moss takes the catch and nearly gets into the end zone. What do you have? Well, what do I have? I have Warren Sapp running the game.
<laughs> and Randy Moss here to be interviewed. You think this guy's handling this? I guess he's good. I think it was his major in college. You know, uh, at UN for the years he did stay, he majored in, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, video communication. There you go. Well, he's got his hand all wrapped up. You think we're even on the picture? I don't know. Sam, we on? <laughs> See, we on. There we go. Yes, ma'am. Okay. On. What about for you, Randy? You set a Pro Bowl record here with seven catches for 166 yards. Did you know this? Uh, no, I don't really go to anywhere thinking about a record. I think records are meant to be broken. And, uh, you know, playing an all-star game like this, you're going to get so much talent in an all-star. So no matter if it's receptions, picks, touchdowns, sacks, whatever it may be, records are meant to be broken. Does uh, Kurt Warner throw a pretty, pretty nice ball? I like that. I think Kurt, you know, over the past couple of years, you know, there's been a lot of talk about guys being, you know, overrated and underrated. But I think I got to give a lot of credit to Kurt and what he's accomplished this year. And, uh, you know, the things he's done in practice, even though he got here a little late. You know, we made things uh, click today, and uh, he threw a nice ball. We got here late for a good reason. Congratulations to you, and Warren, well done. <laughs> I, I got to tell you something. He's running a stunt with that zoom. <laughs> in, out, in, up, down. He can hold it steady, though, can he? Oh, man. Warner, pump fake, did that a lot of times this year. Looking for Randy Moss. And Randy Moss beats James Hasty. Is out of bounds at the five, first and goal. That's scary. Warner to Moss. <laughs> this is Burline oh. into the end zone to Randy Moss. Now that doesn't cement MVP. Nothing will. Randy Moss mic'd up. I feel too good. I feel too good. Oh. I know my mama watching. What's up, mom? I know my kids watching. I know my hood watching back in West V. I know everybody watching. Four, number four, number four. All right, Randy. What's good, baby? Have a good one. All right, man. All right. Uh-uh. The boys doing all their practicing over there. They doing, look at them boys over there doing all their practicing for the deep ball. Y'all ain't gonna stop it. Huh. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of me. I ain't gonna bite you. I'm just gonna hurt you. Put a little bit of fear in your heart. Come out throwing that thing, boy. Come out throwing it. Come out throwing it. Huh? First time I touch the ball, I'm trying to score. First time. First time I touch the ball, I'm trying to score. I'm trying to get in that end zone. Just get a block. All right. Hey, that wasn't no block. Hey. Regular, regular, regular. Come on, y'all. That wasn't no block. Well, Pepper buying time, looking for Moss. Oh, Randy adjusts marvelously and takes it to the 20. Randy adjusts like no other receiver in the league, maybe Isaac Bruce. A fade caught by Carter, tries to get into the end zone and does. What an effort. Good job, Ado. Good job, boy. Old timer. Old timer. I didn't realize where that ball was. If I didn't know where that ball was, I'd have scored. I lost my balance. Keep it on the field, man. Keep it on the field. I see the back turn. I knew he was a gambler, but I didn't know he was an underhanded one. Look at that. Perfect throw and a great catch. Short drop, Paul Pepper, the boss, he makes the catch! An incredible catch! That's just dope. <laughs> How did he do that? <laughs> Star 
and take an audio guy with him in the process. Paul Pepper off his back foot, flips it up for Moss. Randy Moss makes the adjustment for the touchdown. And Chris, I think Randy Moss might have gotten away with a shove. Um, a wide receiver call for the ball. About five yards off the line of scrimmage, he sees he has Al Harris one-on-one. -on -one. He sticks his hand in the air and he says, Dante, don't even bother looking anywhere else. Throw me the football and just let me make a play. Oh. And a lot of the Vikings players have done that time of possession. There's still six minutes left in the first quarter. And it's 17 to nothing, Vikings on top. Pumps for Morton Anderson. Moss, oh, Randy Moss is run. in for a touchdown. Oh, Al Harris playing off, bit up on the route, and Randy Moss, without even really being able to run, as he shoots the moon to the fans here in Green Bay. That is a disgusting act by Randy Moss, and it's unfortunate that we had that on our air line. The touchdown throw by Culpepper. Yeah, you see Dante, he gives the signal there. That's the slant and go signal. He saw Al Harris off and thought that they could take advantage. And Al Harris saw it too, and he thought he was going to jump and get the interception. I mean, literally. Uh, if you don't write checks, how do you pay these guys? Great cash, homie. Last series, Collins to throw. Collins going deep. Collins from Moss, who juggles it, then catches it. Harrison can't tackle him. And Randy Moss, who comes to Oakland after seven illustrious seasons with Minnesota. Tom Brady. I'm a big Tom Brady fan, and the reason why I'm a Tom Brady fan because when Tom Brady came into the league, he was an underdog, and I, I, I love underdogs. The transition from Minnesota um, to Oakland, how was that transition for you? Well, it was kind of hard. You know, I really thought I was going to retire uh, a Minnesota Viking, but at the time that uh, I think it was like 11 o'clock uh, one night, then I got a phone call from my agent. He said, guess what? I said, what? He said, man, they traded you to Oakland. I knew nothing about it. I have never talked to nobody from Oakland. You know, we never visited. We never sat down and had no conversations whatsoever. When your agent told you that you got traded, was it a, a it was a shock? Was it disbelief? Was, was it hurt. like, you, you was hurt? You know, I, I felt that I, I, I really didn't do anything wrong. So uh, me being traded to the Oakland Raiders, I was still a question mark in my head of why. I had to get accustomed to, to a, a whole new setting. And, you know, with the playbook, the, the city, the people, the, the organization, the players, 
So it was it, the transition for me was hard. I didn't know if they were going to accept me for me. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't know how that organization was ran. Even though I do play offense and I, I catch the ball and then I got to look out for all these shots and make sure I don't get my head taken off. But when I go out there and play football, I still play with a chip on my shoulder, man. And, and that's probably just everything that I've been through. Where do we go now? Which way do we go now? Right now, I need happiness. Where I need happiness at is on the field because that's where I find a, a lot of my joy is on the field. That's what I need. I need to, I need to succeed, not, not as an individual. I want to succeed to get on a team or, or, or find a team that is really to, to make that push to go win a Super Bowl ring, and I think that, that will make me happy. He's incredible. Airs it out downfield. Randy Moss is there. And he has a touchdown. Three guys around. A Sunday night football game I was in New England and uh, so all the teammates are coming to me talking about T.O. score four touchdowns and uh, they're coming to blow like, Ooh, Randy topped that T.O. got four so you know it's me and Tom we're getting ready by the locker and I said hey Tom uh, did you know T.O. score four <laughs> he said Randy don't worry I got you and left it at that out of the gun again Brady stepping up feels the pressure going for a touchdown has it that's Randy Moss for six more. Leaves Randy Moss alone by himself. You see, George Wilson goes for the slot. And then when he goes for the slot, it was the Buffalo defenses. Then he was going to meet with his players. And here on a slanty, it's Randy Moss who avoids a tackle and then works his way to the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Too far in there and says, let me go back and try that other thing out there where there's no guys probably what told him to run. Second and six, going to the end zone, caught touchdown to the league, into the Washington Generals. They are the Holland Globetrotters. Right, and that's that two-minute drill, and, and I had that same feeling that Randy Moss is wide open and he doesn't hit him. He's going to come right back to him. He missed him, he runs an in. This one, he runs a corner. He, j he just comes like he's coming to the inside, fakes to the post who come into the game averaging over 39 points a game and I mean think about it in these terms in the NFL the average number of points in a game combined is about 42 and a half otherwise known as the over under this team is almost over by itself in every game 
you know, and they make it look so easy. You know, you think, you know, you know, pro football is hard, playing quarterback is hard, getting open is hard. But when you watch them do it, it doesn't look difficult at all, does it? Randy Moss. Well, how about a day in which Moss and Terrell Owens each with four touchdowns? There could be a connection there, too. You know, I know Terrell Owens watches when he sees Randy Moss do something. I'll bet you that Randy Moss knew what Terrell Owens did today, too. showing why they're great. Going right back to what just failed. And Brady and Moss hook up on a record catch. Well, congratulations, Tom. Congratulations, Randy. And maybe congratulations, New England Patriots. Oh, my goodness. 50 touchdown passes. I, I, I just... You know, it's absolutely incredible what he's been able to do. You now have Peyton Manning, you now have Dan Marino, and Tom Brady stands alone. The significance of that number, 50 touchdown passes. The significance of what Randy Moss has done, 23 touchdown passes. Let's give Jerry Rice a little credit. He caught 22 in 12 games during a strike-shortened season. But not even Jerry Rice got many gifts like James Butler just gave to Randy Moss right there. There's so many things remarkable about the play, though, because Moss had just exhausted himself running a deep route on the previous play, came back and gunned it again. 65-yard touchdown strike, and the Patriots with 15 unanswered points to take the lead 31-28 with just six seconds past 11 minutes remaining in regulation. And what do you do if Randy Moss drops the pass? Go back to him. Throw him another one, baby. Just take off. We've seen it so many times this year.
was in trouble as soon as he started backpedaling off the line of scrimmage. They doubled Wes Welker on the inside, and they left Corey Webster one-on-one -on, -one on Randy Moss. And it just wasn't a match. I think the Jets were even caught off guard. That's part of their strategy. We said it early, it's the pace of the game. Keep changing it up. Revis, where's the deep safety? Moss knew he had him too. He put that hand up early. Didn't they look at he that did. snag. Well, it remains. Brady, Moss, touchdown. Randy Moss. Five with no huddle on the mind of Brady. Great time. Oh, and he's got Moss! <laughs> Lots of coverage, including the officials who were there. How about Moss going into the teeth of the defense to make that catch, including a fifth in the official. Now, this is throwing it right into coverage. Jarius Burks nowhere near. Head coach and a lot of talent on this side of the ball, too. Here's the pressure, Favre. Jump ball, Moss. Got this one. Oh, the 500th career touchdown pass by Brett Favre. And it's the first Favre to Moss.
bring five. Niners pick him up, and Smith finds Moss for the first down and more. There goes Randy Moss down the sideline. Randy Moss on Monday night. What else is new? Touchdown. Look out if the 49ers get Randy Moss going. was outstanding. Watch him break back to the outside and the rookie Fleming out of Oklahoma is no match for Randy Moss. He ran through the Arizona Cardinals like they weren't even there. That looked like a 1999 Randy Moss. Now let's meet the rest of this dynamic class of 2018. This dominant wide receiver owned the end zone. Hauling in the second most receiving touchdowns of all time. And the most in a single season. Going by the singular name of Mills. Randy Moss, AKA Super Freak Marshall.
now that you're going to be putting on that gold jacket and knowing that there are generations of young kids who want to be you. I mean, do you ever think about that? I mean, do you just like, wow, I, I, I kind of took things to another level? I really just genuinely just tried to stay humble throughout the whole process because the kids that you are talking about, that kid was me. It's 2018, my community is still incorporated, okay? And you're sitting up here talking about a guy where I can remember wanting to be Jerry Rice, wanting to run the ball like Barry Sanders, wanting to put that headband on like Walter Payton with the rules on the top of it. You hear me beat dog? Yes, so now, my community being incorporated, all those little kids that we just talking about, now they can say, we got us a Hall of Famer.